Some of the things that are in a lab, I think you know most of these things. Tripods, lights, cameras, microphones. These are the core pieces of equipment. Here is a picture of a couple tripods in our lab. Now, one key point about a tripod is, hey, I know what a tripod is, Professor Warden. You don't need to tell me. That's really simple stuff. That's easy. I've seen that a million times. I've used it before. That may be true, but we do buy fairly expensive tripods. Each one of these tripods is around 800 US dollars, um, 20,000, 25,000 NT dollars. So they're not cheap, but they have many excellent features. Many pieces of equipment in the lab have special features. That is, they do things that are special. How do you know what they do? Well, the easy way to learn is to look at the name that's on the piece of equipment and then Google it. Look it up online. Don't wait for someone to tell you. And don't just ask everything. Hey, Professor Warden, what does this do? What does that do? What does this do? What does that do? Take the initiative and try to learn yourself. Inside the lab, there's so many things that are really awesome to use. They have very special features, but if you don't know, how do you know to use them? You don't know. So please go ahead and look it up. Check the brand name, check the model name, look it up and see, hey, what does this thing do and how can I use it? Okay, now the next thing we have is lights. So here we have lights hanging from our ceiling. And in our lab, like in many studios, you have lights that can move. These rails here can move left and right, and forward and back. And then these arms that hold microphones and lights can move up and down, and they can, of course, move on the rail also. So they can move in every possible direction. But you need to be very careful about the cords. You see the power cords here? or the audio cords that are connecting them. You must be careful not to pull on them. And you also do not want to play around and use your weight and push down or pull down or hang on the rails because they could fall down and hurt someone. So be careful about that. And uh, you know, safety first is always very important. Of course, we have cameras inside the lab. We have many cameras and some things you'll be familiar with and some things not. One thing you probably will recognize is HDMI. So here's an HDMI connector to one of our Sony cameras. And the HDMI connector has the video coming out and that video is going into the control room where it's recorded on the PC. Here's another video camera that's inside of our lab. And this one has a different kind of connector. This is not HDMI, this is SDI. SDI means Serial Digital Interface, and this is a different than HDMI. You can see the cable is much smaller, it's easier to use. And you can see the connector here. What is that connector? Well, if you paid attention in one of the previous classes, I talked about that connector. That's a BNC connector, specifically called BNC. So the BNC connector is this little silver part right there. And uh, yeah, you should know about that. It can lock on. Very, very handy. So that's just a couple of the kind of cables we use. We use many kinds of cables inside of the lab. And again, you can look them up online very easily and see what they're all about and what they do. We have video cables. We have audio cables. We have an audio mixer, of course. And we have PCs that do recording and editing. Here are some of the cables that are in our closet, and these cables are audio cables. These examples are audio. And remember, if you paid attention in the previous class, you would know what kind of cables are these. Whoops, these are XLR, XLR cables. X, whoops, got my pen not working here. XLR. You can see that from the connectors there, XLR audio cables. And you can see our cables have different colors. Why different colors? Because that just makes it easy for us to trace the lines. Where do they go? You know, we plug it in here and we plug it in there. 
where does this, what camera does this go to? What microphone does this go to? Well, you can check the color of the line. That's one way to do it. Another way to do that is we actually can tag the lines. And I think I had an example of tagging the lines, didn't I? Which is right back here. You can see here we have a tag, a label. You see that? So this is telling me that this is floor camera three, camera three, and then inside the control room at the other end of the cable, we'll have another tag that'll say three. So we have a tag here, here's the line, this says three, and then we have another tag here, and this says three, and now we know. Otherwise, it becomes very hard to know which cables go where. It's very confusing very quickly. Here is the SDI, Serial Digital Interface Cable, against the wall, and these are for video signals. Here is our audio mixer, which we saw a little bit earlier. It looks complicated, and that's because it kind of is complicated. It's a hard machine to kind of understand in a short time. You need to spend a lot of time with it. But again, if you get online, you check it out, you come in early, you set things up, then I think you'll learn to at least get the things that you need for your production. You may not learn everything about it, but at least what you need, you'll know. This is a typical microphone that's inside of our lab. This microphone is a shotgun microphone. The shotgun means that it's a long microphone like this. I know in classrooms you've seen those other kinds of typical microphones that look like this, and maybe they have a kind of round, Tip at the end, they have an on-off switch here. Well, those kinds of microphones and these kinds of microphones are very different. And that these kinds of microphones, shotgun microphones, are made to record in a very narrow area. So you need to be right in front of it, speaking right there to the microphone for the microphone to pick up your voice. Whereas the other kinds of microphones you often see you just need to be near it, and it can be 360 degrees in any direction. The shotgun microphone is only going to be recording straight ahead. The good thing about that is that it doesn't get the noise from back here, although it can pick up some, but not so much. And the good thing is everything here in front is very, very clear. So we do have different kinds of microphones, although I prefer to use this kind here, the shotgun microphone. But you need to check out what kind of mics are you using, and you need to know what kind of power does your microphone need. There's a thing called phantom power. That is, this line here will send power to the microphone, or the microphone may take batteries inside. Does it need batteries? Does it have phantom power? Do you have a wire that can give it power? You need to know this, because if you don't have power to your microphone, you're gonna be wondering why it's not working. And if it's not working, what do you do? Well, check it online. Look up its name, see if you can find information about it. There's so much information from people who make YouTube videos, but you can go to the manufacturer and look at the manual and see how to use it. Do that first. Don't take a microphone and say, it's not working, what's wrong? And hit it or knock it. And in the end, you find that's just because you didn't put in a battery or just because you didn't know it needs phantom power. And you end up breaking the microphone even though it was perfectly fine, perfectly workable, everything was okay. That's a little bit um, extreme, isn't it? So please know your equipment. The last thing I say about audio, especially microphones, is test, test, test. You really need to test your microphones a lot. It's easy to think, hey, the microphone should just work. Here's a microphone, I'll plug it in, the sound will come in. My experience is that never happens. You need to test this position, that position, this angle, that angle. Make sure the audio on the mixer is turned up to the sensitivity level you need. The output to the computer is right. There's a hundred different things, and they all make the sound sound different. So you really, you really need to test, 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 and make sure it's working. Now the good thing about the studio is for sure, using the microphone in the studio is much, much easier than using the microphone on location. If you go outside, believe me when I tell you, using microphones outside is really a headache. It's very, very hard. But in the studio, it's hard, but less hard, a little bit easier. So make sure you come in, set it up, and don't waste your opportunity to get the sound right 
inside the studio. Inside the studio we also have the something to focus on. So this is called a focus chart. And we also have a gray card. This is help us get good exposure. So a gray card and a focus chart are very handy. In fact, I often like to hang these together. And where do I hang them? I often hang them onto my dummy. And so we've got a dummy here. And this dummy can put our focus card right here to make it easy to focus. Now the dummy helps, helps us to test exposure to see the dark and light comparison without having a person sit there for hours at a time because the setup can take many hours inside of the studio. Okay, so that's that. Come back here. And uh, yeah, so that's my dummy. Okay. So those are all things that you will often see in the studio. Try not to lose them, and it's best to know where they are so you can find them quickly.